Hi, I'm Jonathan Oxer, and this is Superhouse. One of the problems I found with my homebrew home automation system is noise. It's not something I would have considered in advance, but it's turned out to be a bit of an issue. It's basically because I'm using a lot of secondhand gear. I get old office equipment and things like that, modify it and set it up for use in my home automation system. The problem is that computers designed for use in offices, or at least ones designed for use in data centers, particularly rack mount gear, aren't designed to be quiet. In fact, one of the things that um, is quite a problem with rack mount equipment is keeping it cool because rack gear is usually very thin, it's in a very hot environment, it's very power dense. So they run lots of really small fans really fast trying to blast the air through and the result is that you get really noisy gear, which is fine if you're inside a data center, but it's horrible if you're trying to sleep on the other side of the wall. Now the back of this electrical cabinet is uh, floor sheeting, so this is solid. And I put that in like that because I wanted a really good mounting base to fit everything to. So I can screw things into it, I can mount the firewall and various other things, the switchboard is screwed into it. I didn't want just a piece of uh, plaster sheet there. However, that is a problem because if you're trying to do noise isolation, the worst possible thing is to mount gear on a solid backboard or on a solid base. Because what it does is just transmit the sound straight through. It doesn't isolate it at all. So you might think, put things in a solid box and that'll keep the sound from escaping. In fact, that's the worst thing you can do. You really need to have it um, on soft mounts inside foam or something like that. Uh, so the thing is, this is on the center line of the house. On the other side of this wall is two bedrooms. There's one bedroom on that side, one on this side. And the back of this electrical cupboard is on the inside of cupboards in both of those bedrooms. Most of the time it's fine. But if you're in there lying asleep in the quiet, late at night, lying late at night, trying to get to sleep, and you can hear this in the background, it's like a mosquito you can never kill, it drives you insane. So right now I have a power over ethernet switch down here which has got that buzz going on, and I want to try to shut that up. And the other thing is that this is about to get a whole lot worse because just recently, a friend of mine um, over in Perth alerted me to the fact that Red Flag Land was getting rid of a whole bunch of their gear and I managed to snag myself a couple of these rack mount switches. So these are going to be mounted in here as well and um, these have fans in them so we need to somehow make these switches run more quietly and also shut up that switch that is already mounted in there. So let's pull this apart and see if we can make it run a bit more quietly. This is one of the Netgear Gearbit switches that I'm just about to add and that's what it looks like with its clothes off. Now this is actually a slightly unusual layout for rack mount gear. Most of the time what you find with rack equipment is they are designed to work on the hot aisle cold aisle principle where the front of the equipment is in an aisle in a data center where cold air is pumped in and the back of the equipment is in what they call the hot aisle and that's where the exhaust air is pumped out. And the idea is to always keep air flowing from front to back through the rack. Now this is a little bit unusual because what you can see is that there are holes on the left side here. There are a couple of fans on the right. The back is totally enclosed. Once it's sealed up, the front is totally enclosed as well. And it's obviously designed for lateral airflow. So the fans blow out, um, which basically sucks in cool air from the side, which flows over the power supply itself over the main CPU, over these I.O. Um, chips, whatever they are under there, and is it blown out to the side here. So air goes in one side, across and straight out through the other. That's pretty unusual. Um, you don't see a lot of rack mount gear like that. Normally it's got air intakes under the front somewhere, fans on the back, and air is drawn in through the front and blows out the back. But, oh well, doesn't really make much difference to me. So these are the culprits. Because this system is designed to have a lot of air flowing through it and these fans are tiny, the little 40 millimeter fans. They've got to basically spin like crazy. They've got to work their asses off in order to get enough air flow through there. So they run very fast and therefore they sound like jet engines. And that sucks. So what I'm going to try to do is slow them down. Well actually what I'm going to do is disable one of them entirely and I can do that just by unplugging it. 
and um, I don't want airflow to come in through this side and loop around so I'll also block that up. What I want to do is slow down this other fan. I'll leave this one running um, and this particular one is 5 volt fans. One of the things you can do that's a fairly common trick is if you have 12 volt fans just connect them to a 5 volt rail and they'll still spin but they'll spin more slowly they won't make as much noise um, but because these are 5 volt fans I have to be just slightly more creative in order to slow it down and um, with a little bit of experimentation what I've discovered is approximately 44 ohms in series with this fan will make it spin um, it'll start reliably and it will turn over and it will have reasonable airflow but it doesn't sound anything like the jet engine that it started as so what I'm going to do is make up a little cable that I can plug in series with this plugs into the connector on the PCB plugs into here has 44 ohms resistance so I've put together all the parts I've got the same connectors wandered down to my local JCAR store and I've got connectors and I've got a couple of 22 ohm resistors which makes up 44 ohms some heat shrink tubing some wire and I can make myself a little extension cable you can see very clearly what I've done I've got a female connector on one end male connector on the other they are oriented so that it's just a direct pass through it's a 22 ohm resistor in series with each leg I mean that was just for convenience because I wanted 44 ohms you'll need to uh, figure out what resistance you need of course and some heat shrink tubing so next I'll just slide that up over the resistors shrink that into place and I'll have myself a neat little cable that I can put in series with the fan this is the fan connection the switch is now powered up you wouldn't know it because none of the indicator LEDs are connected and the fans are disconnected but it's actually live right now so I take the little jumper cable that I've just made plug it in series with the fan plug the other end into the fan socket and the fan starts up so it's now running I doubt you can hear that but um, it's now blowing I can feel it blowing on my hand and so there should be a reasonable amount of airflow coming through this case now the obvious question here is am I going to blow this thing up by doing it am I going to make things overheat I'm a little bit paranoid now I think I'm probably going to be okay because this gear I'm using nowhere near the limits to which it was designed um, and in a reasonably uh, well controlled environment as well but I do err on the side of paranoia so what I'm going to do is get some kind of a temperature profile of the device with the fans connected at full speed exactly as they were originally then I'm going to switch to covering up this fan and having it disconnected running this fan at a lower speed and I'll see what the difference is so what I'm going to do is mount inside the device a little temperature and humidity sensor not that I care about humidity but I like these sensors they're pretty cool to work with and I'm going to mount an RJ12 connection on the back now this is actually the same as the environmental monitoring that I use elsewhere in the house. I have little environmental monitoring nodes that use RJ12 connectors uh, so that I can do quick you know, snap together um, sensor connections. But I'm going to do, that's a, a, um, a pretty interesting system so I'm going to do a whole episode about that some other time. For now the important thing to know is just that I'm going to take one of these modules and mount it just down in this area. So that it um, basically it should be picking up the temperature of the air inside the case after the air has passed across um, certainly the CPU and most of the these heat sinks so it should be pretty much as hot as it gets inside the case in this area right here and I'm going to have that connected back to my Arduino based environmental monitoring system and that way I can record and plot the temperature inside the case of the device over time I'll do that with the fans at full speed and then switch to my little um, low speed fan setup and I'll see if the temperature goes up now you can see that with a bit of work with the Dremel I've managed to cut a square hole in the back of the case and I've used some epoxy to uh, glue that RJ12 connector in place I've got the temperature and humidity sensor here so I just need to stick this onto the board um, obviously I need to make sure I don't shorten anything out but I've got some double sided foam tape here which is pretty thick so uh, it provides a nice insulation layer so I'm just going to stick this in place quite close to the uh, the main processor and that's ready to go what I've done is push the data to COSM which is what used to be uh, Patch Bay and this is temperature data over about a three hour period so you can see down on the left here it started um, with 
the temperature stable at about 19 degrees. This was with the switch totally powered off. It was just sitting there on the bench doing nothing. Then I turned it on and it ran with the both internal fans at full speed. Temperature went up about 10 degrees above ambient. So it ended up around the 30 degree mark and sat there pretty stable for about an hour. This was with some traffic going through it as well. I had some devices plugged into the switch so that it'll be a realistic uh, test. Then I pulled the cover off and you can see the temperature actually drops just here for a couple of minutes. That's because I removed the cover in order to turn to unplug one of the fans and slow the other one down. So um, it got good ventilation just briefly and then the temperature started to climb again. So this is with one fan disabled and one fan running very slowly. And it went up about another 10 degrees above ambient again. So it ended up sitting stably at around 40 degrees, which I think is pretty acceptable. So um, the end result is that with just one fan running slowly, it runs about 20, 20 degrees above ambient rather than 10 degrees above ambient. Um, and it sat there. I ended up running it for a couple of days and um, it was quite stable at that temperature. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to leave the fan running at that speed and hopefully it'll be a lot quieter, but still survive. Now it's time to do the same process on the power over ethernet switch. I've got it open here, once again it's powered up, you can see the guts of it. This is a more traditional rack layout, you can see the fans are at the back, so what it's doing is drawing air through, uh, in this case it's actually got some vents on the sides, and there are two major thermal zones. This is the main power supply that you can see down on the left, so it has two fans drawing air in through the front left, across the um, transformer and all the other bits and pieces and venting it out the back. This fan is for venting the main area here. This is the, um, the main control board that talks to all of the, um, the ethernet ports. So um, and also you'll see that this has three connections to each fan instead of two. These are 12 volt fans, not five volt like in the other. And they have a sense um, connection on them. There's a little hall effect thing that detects whether the fan is spinning or not. And so if you unplug a fan or it fails for some reason, you get complaints in the log file inside the switch saying, hey, something is not working. So I won't bore you with all the details, but what I discovered is that I can't run these fans at five volts. Um, so what I've done is made up a couple of little jumpers once again. I found that the sweet spot for this was about 78 ohms in order to be able to uh, run the fan slowly and not make uh, too much noise. So I've got a couple of extension cables that I just splice in. I'll put those in in a moment. I've also got another humid module with an RJ12 connector on it. Um, next I'll break out the Dremel, cut a little hole in the back here and glue this in place and then I'll stick the temperature sensor inside the case. That way I can monitor this switch as well. So now there are three switches with active cooling mounted in the rack. Before there was only one. And these three switches are actually quieter than the single switch was before, thanks to the fans running a bit more slowly. And we've got the power over ethernet switch down here and a couple of gigabit switches for general connections around the house and around the office. And you may notice, if you are really paying attention, that everything has been moved down a little bit in the rack. I've decreased the gap between several of these units. That's because I wanted to make a bit more space at the top. I'm going to put an environmental monitoring system across the top here. And at the moment, I just have an Ether 10, which is like an Arduino Uno with built-in Ethernet, sitting up the top, uh, looking very crude, with cables going off to the humid sensors. There's a cable here with the RJ12 jack that goes to uh, the connector on the back of an Ethernet switch. This is currently recording the temperature and humidity within each of the switches every two seconds and publishing it to the MQTT server. And also recording the temperature within the cabinet itself just with this sensor which is hanging around loose. Uh, one of the next projects is going to be to clean all of that up and have a nicely integrated environmental monitoring system in here. That can be for a future video. Now one thing to keep in mind is that if you are going to do something like slow down the fans on devices, you're deliberately increasing the temperature at which they run. The mean time between failure on electronic components pretty well correlates to the temperature that it runs at. If you can make something run colder, generally it will last a lot longer. In this particular case, the temperature hasn't gone up that much. Now that it's been running in here for a couple of days at the lower fan speed, the power over ethernet switch, for example, is running at about 10 to 13 degrees above ambient temperature, which is actually pretty good. Um, but just keep in mind, quite apart from 
fire danger and things like that of making things run hotter. If you do increase their operating temperature by a bit, you can decrease their operating life. Uh, I got all of, in fact, all of this gear I bought secondhand um, from different places, so I don't actually care all that much if something fails because it didn't cost me much in the first place. I want to make sure that it's, um, it's all quiet and it's a good environment to live in. It's more important to me right now. Uh, so, see you next time.